Guys, I screwed up big time and I almost got fired. All because I made this one really stupid mistake that could have cost me my entire developer career. So I want to tell you the story about this because I learned some really hard lessons and I want to share them with you in this video. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then I can show you how to do just that head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started now. All right, so in my last video, I talked about how I've made over a million dollars as a developer. So go check out that last video if you haven't already. But inside of there, I talk about, you know, how I got started and how I, you know, got to that point where I crossed that million dollar mark. Uh, and in this video, I want to focus on the very beginning of that story, all right? Because that's when this happened. Like, I almost got fired really early on in my career. And maybe I wouldn't actually have gotten to where I've gotten today if I just let this totally ruin me, all right? So I'll talk about that. And so why? Like, why was this such a big deal? Well, it's because it was actually my very first job as a developer. And actually my very first task, like on day one of being a professional developer, all right? So I'll give you more background on my, you know, past. You know, I was a developer, a regular software developer, full stack developer before I got into blockchain. Like, again, go watch that other video if you want the full story. Um, but I started out as like a full stack web developer. You know, I taught myself from scratch. I didn't go to a coding boot camp. I didn't uh, get a computer science degree. I got rejected from coding boot camp, in fact, and just taught myself. And I started out as a professional software developer as a freelancer. OK, that's a different route than what a lot of people take, but that's what I did. And so. Basically, on my very first job, I was working one on one with a mentor who was a more senior software developer than I was, who was basically in charge of the project and he was delegating tasks to me. And so, this very first task was a little bit of a test. It's sort of like, hey, you know, what can this guy handle? I mean, he had seen my background before, I had built a portfolio, I had talked to him a lot. He'd actually like watched me code at some meetups and stuff like that. So, he had a, a general idea of like what I was capable of. Well, the project that we were working on was, you know, owned by a client. And basically, it was a music related app where people could, you know, sign up and like track their favorite artists and stuff like that. And, you know, this is where people would sign up with an email address and a password. And once they did, they were added to some email marketing software where they could get, you know, some regular updates from the platform, all that kind of stuff. My first task as a developer was to work on some backend code, right? So just living on the backend on the server side to actually take user information from the database and update it in the email marketing software, okay? And so I'll be honest with you, like when I jumped into this, even though I had like learned a lot from tutorials and all this kind of stuff, my very first task as a professional developer was really scary, all right? Honestly, no matter how many tutorials you do, how many portfolio projects you build, when you go into a professional setting where there are demands of you uh, to, to build a real world project, like there's nothing that can truly prepare you for that. And you really have to jump, all right? And kind of have to be put in this sink or swim situation. And in my case, I almost sank. So I'm gonna tell you about that. Uh, but also pause and say like, that doesn't mean tutorials are bad. That doesn't mean a building portfolio is bad. Those are necessary things to getting you to that point. But there's really nothing like just jumping in uh, to learn how real world projects work. I was just sitting there trying to figure out how this stuff even worked. And on the back end, basically like you had to move you had data inside of a database and I had to go to this other app, which the email marketing software at the time was MailChimp, okay? And MailChimp had an API. I had never done that, okay? And I was literally learning how to do that on my first job. And that just shows you how green I was, okay? But it was possible. I still got hired, still was able to do this, even though I didn't understand this really essential task. And so I was trying to figure this out. I had the API documentation. I had the backend code sitting there. And I was just like trying to write this you know, testing it out by hand, doing it in the console, doing a test environment. And it, it just took forever. I mean, it, it took an obscene amount of time, okay? I was kind of embarrassed, honestly, at how long it took me. But I finally got something that I thought was going to work, okay? And when I wired it up, I hit run, and it worked. And I was like, whoa, like, Look what it, look what I did. Okay, I actually like I made something happen. I did my first professional developer job, first task complete. Like I'm amazing. You know, I finally did it. But then something really terrible happened. Okay, 
I started getting all these emails that was like, do you want to opt into your emails? Do you want all this kind of stuff? And I was like, whoa, 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 where did these other emails come from? So what I didn't realize is that whenever you put the new emails in MailChimp with the API, by default, it will ask the users to re-opt into the mailing list, all right? So basically, all the emails from the customer database that I moved to MailChimp, every single person in that list got an email in their email inbox saying, do you want to re-opt into this program? It's called like a double opt-in, all right? And so I basically sent out like over 10,000 emails by mistake because I had no idea what I was doing, all right? And you know, it's not just that the customers got annoyed by these extra emails coming in, it's that a lot of them probably unsubscribed from the mailing list, which basically means that the, you know, the app lost future prospects and probably cost the business some, you know, some customers over the long term. And so I was just like completely dejected. <laughs> like my very first task on my very first job as a developer, I screwed up big time and just sent out an obscene amount of emails and probably did damage to this poor business who basically agreed to hire me through my other mentor. And I was so embarrassed. I was like, I'm gonna get fired. Like, I'm gonna go in tomorrow and they're gonna say, okay, you know, pack up your stuff. We're not even gonna pay you for that time. Like, get out of here. And if that had happened, like, I might have just quit. I might have just said, hey, this software development thing is not for me. I'm clearly not qualified for this. Uh, I'm just gonna peace and go do something else. And the hardest part was like, I realized that I had to tell my mentor what I did, the guy who hired me, because like, I wasn't just gonna wait for, you know, customers to start complaining, cause then eventually, you know, it's gonna come back on me and they're gonna say, why didn't you tell us? So I had to go tell him. And I remember messaging him and I was just like, oh my gosh, he's gonna, he's gonna fire me. But thankfully, that's not what happened, all right? In fact, he was really gracious, really generous to me, because honestly, like even an experienced developer might have made this mistake because the API documentation was so confusing. And if you didn't put this one specific flag on the API call, then it would have done this. It's not really so much about my technical incompetence is not just having understood how their kind of silly API worked at the time, all right? So he was actually very gracious with me and I didn't get fired. And the clients were really cool about it. You know, people didn't complain that much over email, but at the time, man, I was just, I thought I was done. And I thought my developer career was basically just over before it started, okay? So I learned a lot from that, all right? And I didn't let that stop me. I kept going, it built up my confidence. And you know, I, I went on to do, you know, basically what I talked about in the last video about crossing over a million dollars in software development and wanna keep going well beyond that. And so now I wanna talk about some takeaways from this, all right? Because I learned a lot from this, you know, I bear the scars of the mistakes that I've actually made in the professional world. And all these mistakes have actually made me stronger, smarter, you know, I know what to watch out for the next time. And so I wanna talk about some of those right now so that you can learn from them. All right, so the first thing to understand is that really nothing can prepare you for the real world like actually being in the real world, right? So I talked about it a little bit earlier, but I'll elaborate on that, right? So tutorials are great. I highly recommend tutorials. And that's why I put them out on this channel. That's why I do the blockchain bootcamp because I mean, they're a great way to get the skills, okay? But then you have to take the skills up to a next level. And that's by just jumping in and working on a real world project with somebody else. You're gonna have to do this like with an employer or like if you're a freelancer, you know, maybe you could get some help and you know, work on your own project or work under someone else like I did. And this can be really scary. In fact, it can be the scariest part of your entire career because you just have to jump. All right, you don't know what you don't know and you have to just step one foot in front of the other and find out what happens. And like, look at me, you know, I, I messed up big time, but it didn't ruin my career. Like you're going to make mistakes. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you're, you're never gonna do things perfectly. You're gonna make mistakes. Some would be bigger than others. So you can't let that stop you from acting. So that brings me to point number two, which is that when you're first starting, all right, and you're working for somebody else, nobody really expects you to know exactly what you're doing. If they did, like they would just hire you for a more advanced role. And at the end of the day, you know, whoever's employing you is ultimately assuming the liability for the mistakes that you make. So you have to understand that. And of course, you know, they could fire you if you're just grossly incompetent, but chances are like if you've worked really hard to get your skills up and you, you know, get your first job, you're probably not grossly incompetent. And 
I honestly wasn't grossly incompetent when I took that job and made that mistake, right? Like I said, I didn't know what an API was and that was, you know, not great, but they didn't honestly expect me to know. Like they knew that I didn't know. They were willing to let me learn about it and implement it into the application, all right? There was an expectation that I knew that. So like new employers know that you don't necessarily understand everything. That's okay. They're willing to train you. And that's why you typically pay a little bit less when you're starting out because of the time it takes to train you, okay? So they're not expecting to know everything. They're not expecting you to be perfect. And they fully expect that you'll make mistakes. And they're ultimately going to pay for the liability of that over the long term. All right, and the last thing is, you know, whenever you fail, because you will fail, all right, you have to just like, let it roll off you. This mistake that I made, you know, it felt like the biggest deal at the time. I was totally convinced that I was going to get fired, but it really wasn't that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. Sure, a lot of people got some annoying emails. Some people are probably unsubscribed. The business probably lost some customers over the long term. But like on the grand scheme of things, it is not that big of a deal. And honestly, like I don't even think about this that much at this point in my life. It didn't really have any significant impact on my long term future as a developer. And so it's unlikely that, you know, the mistakes that you make are also going to have that impact on you, too. All right. So that being said, you need to own your mistakes. You know, if you go into an environment and you drop a production database and then you act like, well, it wasn't my fault, then that's a different story, right? But if you're always willing to improve, always willing to own your mistakes, then with that attitude, they're probably not going to ruin you ultimately. So don't let them stop you from just jumping in and moving forward. All right. So that's the story about how I almost got fired from my very first developer job on the very first day. And that's what I learned from it. And hopefully you learned some things from this too. All right. So while nothing can truly prepare you for your very first you know, developer job or being in the real world, the tutorials are definitely the best place to start. All right. And also building real world projects. So subscribe to this channel. Click the like button down below. Actually smash the like button down below to see more videos like this when they come out. And if you want to get started, you know, on this path to becoming a blockchain developer today, you can just go to my YouTube homepage and find any of the tutorials there. They're like several hours long. They're like Udemy courses, but they're just free. So if you like those videos and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, then I can show you how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.